Hey YouTube, Dawson Ryder here and welcome to my review for Power Rangers Heroes of the Grid, the board game slash RPG game. This review is going to include basically everything that's available right now. This is the main game, you have the Shattered Grid, the Villains Expansions, the extra character packs, the extra Megazord packs. This is part of the Morphin Master level of backing, so you have everything that's out right now. I'm going to be going over all the contents of them and the quality, starting with the main set and then going down the line, and I'll talk about what I'm going to say about the rules uh, at the end after I kind of go over the contents of each. But let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so here we have the core five ranger figures. As you can see, they're not painted. They're just individually colored pieces. Kind of remind you of the chess pieces from In Space, right? When they were just like these colored blocks of rangers. But they're actually pretty well sculpted. Like, I really like the look of them. I like the style of them. I mean, it would be cool if they were painted. Like, I get some people like to paint their RPG figures, but it's like, paint it for me. I'm not your maid. But if you are good at painting or know someone that's good at painting, you can customize these. But, you know, setting aside the fact that they're not not painted, I think that they're pretty solid looking little figures. Obviously these ones are a little bit on the less end of exciting for me because, you know, we have 15,000 variations to be exact of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers figures. Uh, but once you get started to think, once you get started, once you get started on things like, you know, the Wizard of Deception and the Hyperforce Rangers here in a bit, it becomes a little bit cooler. So yeah, these are a look at the, the core five Ranger figures. Now we have the villain figures included in this set. These have a lot more sculpted details which look really nice. So if you are like really good at painting, you'll be able to really deck these out if you want to paint them. You got Pudgy Pig here, which is pretty nice looking. Like I feel like these will be easier to paint too because they're not one block color. So like I feel like it would look weird if you detail the rangers like white and black highlights but then leave their core color like it'll contrast. But these all have really nice molding, and a lot of these we don't really have proper figures of, or at least haven't gotten ones in a while. And obviously this isn't really an amazing substitute if you want a fully articulated figure that's going to go along with some of your basic figures. But these are still really nicely detailed figures, and if, like I said, if you can find someone that can paint it, or if you're really good at painting it, then I think that's really super neat. I'm trying to get the camera to focus on this guy, and it just doesn't want to. Just do it! Achieve your dreams! There we go, dreams achieved. So for the putties, there's only these two varieties of putties, basically the regular and these super, like the mutant putties with got two heads and they have like a giant bowling ball rock they're about to throw at you. You get 12 of each, so there is more than just these two, but I wasn't about to put like all of them on here just so you can see them, but these are the two varieties. Also, the nice thing about these is they don't really require any paint because that's the color the putties are. I mean, yeah, there's some details you can do, but these are the easy peasiest for, you could just leave them alone, honestly, if you want to. I'm, I'm sorry I just said easy peasiest. Okay, now we have a look at the cards. These are the character cards. As you can see here, we start with Jason. All of them have the same back, which is this neat art of the Megazord. Let's see, you got Jason, Billy. You know, each one's got an ability, obviously. Billy and an ability, get it? Zack, Kimberly, Trini, and then you start with the Zords. Tyrannosaurus, nope, not Blurosaurus. Tyrannosaurus, Sabertooth Tiger, Mastodon. Triceratops. I, does anybody else just hear that in their head? In, like in order, Pterodactyl, and then Dino Megazord, and then back to one. Now we have like the hero attack cards. Well, obviously there's gonna be some duplicates. So you got Blade Blaster, Mammoth Slam, which is just like an attack, Power Axe, some are based on weapons, some are based off of, well, attacks, Reckless Blow, some duplicates of that, Smooth Moves, Sweeping Strike, let's move this a little bit closer. Blade Blaster again, I don't know why those are separate. Counter Jab, Knowledge is Power, Mighty Maces, is that what it says? Yep. Power Lance, Tactical Strike, Acrobatics, Arrow Shot, Blade Blaster, why are you separating those? Flying Kick, Power Bow, Take Aim, Blade Blade Blaster, I swear to God, you guys need to stick together. Block. Lead the charge. Power Sword. Team Tactics. Tyranno Slash. Bl Blade Blaster. 
Twin Fang teamwork. Precise strike. Precise strike. Saber tooth strike. Saber tooth strike. That's really cool art. Tenacity. And then you have these villain cards here, which there's going to be more. So you have Putty Patroller, multiple cards, like that. And their backings are based off of location. So like right here, Angel Grove Park, Ernie's Juice Bar. But then the rest of the backings are just this PR Lightning Bolt. Speaking of villain cards, as you can see here, these are the regular, like, the full stack of villain cards. Those came in the Heroes pack, but these are Super Putty Patrollers, not Ultra. But these are the ones that are actually in the villain's deck. And you can see that there's different variations on the number. Then you got the individual villains. You have Bones, Nasty Knight, Madam Woe, Pudgy Pig, Rita Repulsa. And then you have the Cannon Fodder. You have their attacks, Leaping Attack, Flanking. I was Leap Attacked by some idiot in the projects. Swarm Attack, Putty Pummel. It's pretty cool art too. Regrow, Engulf, Swarm Attack, Chain Lightning. I guess you can read, but Cruel Laughter. It's better than me just sitting there silent, right? 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 Which is Curse. Shadow Binding, Wicked Hex. Where's Charmcaster? Teleport. That's really cool. I like that. Deadly Claws. God, the art on these is really cool. Brain Lash. Well, that almost looks like that iconic cover of Bane breaking Batman's back, except it's like her doing that. Madam Woe, Breath of Death, Night Slash, Lion Shield, Smash and Slash. You know how it is. Blade Beam, Butter Knife Cutter, Salad Fork Stab, Ravenous Hunger. That's pretty cool because it's, you know, replicating what they did in the show. Eyes Laser, Skeleton Sword, Skeleton Sword, Grave Digger Slash, and Regeneration. And then again, you have their individual cards have art based off of who they are, which is super cool. They almost look like tarot cards, don't they? Like, that's kind of cool. So you got each individual art for those. Madam Woe's art. Rita Repulsa's, Putty Patrollers, Super Putty Patrollers, just kind of general villain cards for like boss cards, like a, you know, a general kind of lineup is what I meant, and then the location-based ones. Then of course we have all our game-related pieces. You have the board here, like, and then you know the backing. That's like the most interesting part of this whole box really is the backing of that. But you got your board, you got your location cards, Angel Grove High, Angel Grove Park, Industrial District, again, where's the warehouse district, Ernie's Juice Bar, and then on the back of them, you have, like, information instead of literally just a picture that tells you what their individual, you know, ab not abilities, that's like a weird way to say. What's the ability of Ernie's Juice Bar? It's got super juice powers. And then here's obviously all the tokens you're going to want to pop out. Like, they're not just like, here, I'm going to put my tokens on the board. But I'm just kind of waiting to do that until I actually play the game and then organize them into the little baggies they give you. But you got all your tokens. I don't know why I flipped that around. It's like the same thing. And then right here, the same thing. You got your Megazord token and your sort of power marker token and right. all that stuff. All right, and that is the core contents of the main starter pack. Like, this is basically like the starter deck. This is what you need to play. All you need is this. You don't necessarily need any of the other things. So if you pick this up, you'll be able to play. If you buy one of the individual Megazord figures, you will not be able to play. I mean, you can play with the figure, but... So yeah, this is what comes with it. Obviously, there was more putties and the other things, but this is just the gist of it. And obviously, you have the rule book as well, which explains some really nice recipes, actually. No, but table of contents like literally the contents, how to set up the game board, all the general rules. Basically, it's like a game where you are setting up scenarios where villains are attacking, you select a ranger to portray, and you're using the cards and various things at your disposal to, you know, fight said monsters and stuff like that. I'll talk a little bit more about that near the end of the video after I go over the other sets. But yeah, this is the core starter pack. I think it's a very solid set. I think if you're interested in games like these and you like what you see of the quality, I'm very happy with the quality. I mean, the cards have that nice new card smell. The figures are very nice. It gets you set up nicely. So if you're interested in checking something like this out, I can definitely recommend picking this up. It's really a neat set. But now let's go ahead and take an overview look at the various expansions, starting with Shattered Grid. <laughs> Alright, here we have what I consider to be the main event of this whole thing, which is the Hyperforce figures. You have all five core Hyperforce figures. I mean, of course they're not painted, but you can probably do that yourself, like I said. Even if they're not painted, I'm really happy to have these. The only thing that's really wrong with them, other than the fact that I have to paint them myself, I'm not sure made, is that Chloe's, like, staff weapon here, the, the scythe, 
is a little bit bent. Like I actually moved it behind her head so it looks a little less weird. But when I got it out of the box, you might even seen it in the unboxing video. It was like in front. So that was a little bit bent. But these are really cool little figures and literally the only official Hyperforce figures we have right now. So even if they're unpainted little blocks and I'm too chicken to try to paint them, I'm really happy we have them. I think it's really cool that they gave these guys attention. It makes sense since they were given attention in the Shattered Grid Final Battle, which is what the set is based off of. Would have been really cool to also get their the Kronos version of their Megazord, but hey, I'm not complaining. I think this is super neat that they got an expansion role or a role in this expansion, and I'm really happy with these. I think they're really nice little molds, and you know, they'll be even better if you're someone that's, you know, skilled at painting. And here we have the other figures that are included in it. It seemed a little bit miscellaneous, but I didn't want to split it up amongst just villains and literally the only other two ranger figures. This guy may seem like he's a little outlier, this little tiny uh, Black Ranger Sentry figure, but you get a bunch of these in the pack. I just didn't feel like putting all of them on there. I didn't think it was necessary. But you get a ton of those. That's just an example of what they look like. Obviously here then you have Jen and Lauren, who are the other two members of Team Shattered Grid, which was basically our core five Mighty Morphin Rangers, and then these two. So that's super neat. Then you have this Lord Dragon figure. Wait for it! I'm turning it myself because as you can see the camera's blurring and when I put it on automatic it blurs even more so but there you have a nice Lord Dragon figure this one will be pretty easy to paint since it's kind of more of a traditional blank slate I think a very solid mold and then you have your Ranger Slayer figure here I'm not sure why she's not pink the human figure is I'm sure that has something to do with the game colors maybe but it just kind of bothers me like these look cool I almost kind of wish in a way that they were all gray now just because that looks like almost the Geo statues like they're frozen in you know, time or something. Now we have our cards. Here are our traditional character cards. All the backs are yet again the Mighty Morphin Megazord to keep things together. You got Marv, you got the goat, Vesper, you have Jack, you have the other goat, Chloe and her burritos. The burritos aren't mentioned though, or are they? Nope, I was hoping they were mentioned. Maybe no, that's a diamond, not a burrito. Then you got Eddie, again, unfortunately no Joe. And then you have Jen Scotts, Lauren Sheba, members of Team Shattered Grid, and then this is my favorite part, really cool art of the Hyperforce Zords. Lion Hyperforce Zord, Serpent Hyperzord, Ram Hyperzord, Cerberus Hyperzord, Phoenix Hyperzord, and then the Kronos Hyperforce Megazord, which is their Megazord combined with other bits from the final battle. That was the one I was referring to and I said it would be cool to have a figure. Jen's Time Flyer, the Bullzord for Lauren, and then back to one. Then you have the Hyperforce battle cards, which have the Hyperforce art I had mentioned in the unboxing. Some really cool Hyperforce art on these. And you get to see like a look at their weapons. Like there wasn't concrete photos of their weapons, which is neat. Like you kind of had to hunt them down. Here you have the Cetus Lapidus Blaster and the Cetus Lapidus Claws. But I really love the art on these. I'm just kind of like not annoyingly reading all of them, just kind of letting you read them. So I'm not just talking at you, but now I'm talking at you. So, I don't know, this is really cool. This is honestly my favorite part, is just all the really cool Hyperforce art. That was the art that was released early. They released blues and uh, blacks and I think it was yellows as well. So, like, that was super cool, like, ahead of time. And some of these attacks, obviously, well, a lot of them are from the show, which is really neat. The Blade, I guess there's a, there's got to be a reason the Blade Blaster is mixed in. There was the, the Vesper art that was in there. So that's really cool. I really like getting a clearer look at the weapons. So super neat. I wish that they had a, um, yeah, that's really, that's very, very fitting of Chloe. They had one of the Chloe's Battleizer, the pink battle warrior. That would have been really cool. I mean, as a figure, selfishly, yes, that would have been an awesome figure. Um, and the backs are all of these. But it also would have made a really cool card just to see art of that. Then you have the more Shattered Grid and villain related ones. I mean, obviously you have Team Shattered Grid cards here for Jen, and then one for Lauren, and then you can see it's actually using comic art. It reminds me a lot of the old Dragon Ball Z card game cards that would use stills from the show. Uh, so yeah, they're all using stuff from Shattered Grid. Then you have these little cards here for the sentries, just like the putties, but for the sentries um, in various numbers depending on what you're using. Black Dragon, who was a precursor to the Draken storyline in general. Ranger Slayer, Lord Draken, and then you have their associated cards after you get past the Team Shattered Grid stuff there. So you got some cool Ranger Slayer art. Nice mix of kind of original art for this. There's Black Dragon punching the Dragon Zord in the face. And, you know, comic used art. So, very cool. We are reaching the end here. There's Lord Dragon card. Alright, and then the backs. 
Kind of like the other ones, you have ones associated with each character, like Lord Draken, Black Dragon, using some of the same art, Ranger Slayer, Mastodon Sentries, and then uh, some of the group ones like Monster, Resistance Hideout, which is cool. I like that one. Zord Graveyard, and then the generic backings here. Okay, so that's the core contents of the Hyperforce set. Obviously, you get location cards, too. I mean, they're not cards, but you know what I mean. Zord Graveyard and the Resistance Hideout. So it's the same art you saw on the cards. And then this bit here for the, the mat. I haven't had my muffin yet, mat. But you can see it's the Time Force field where the, you have the Megazord transporting. Was it the Transport Megazord or something? Transport. But it looks cool. And, oh, obviously here... This isn't like the instructions, it's just kind of like introduction, it shows you what you get. As I mentioned, 12 foot soldiers, so it's not just the one, obviously it just wouldn't make sense to put the 12 on there. And it talks about some various things that this adds, table of contents, hyperforce story, little, or, or not, well, not hyperforce, shattered grid story, there we go. But honestly, overall, I really like this set. I think I mentioned a couple times, it's my personal favorite of just the whole lineup. Like, even if I wasn't interested in this game, I would probably pick this up because I'm a big Hyperforce fan, and I really like having these little figures, even if they're not painted, and I love the art on them. So, I mean, if you're playing the game, if my personal recommendation is this one set based on my personal bias. I think it's really neat. Uh, but even if you're not interested in it, and you really are desperate for something Hyperforce like me, I think it's at least worth a look. Like, I don't know, I just really dig this set. Uh, but let's move along to the villain one, which is arguably better in an objective sense. Okay, here we have our first lineup of figures. This set has a ton of figures. So you have Goldar here, little mini Finster because he's a different type of class, which I did not really know when I did the unboxing. Wizard of Deception was, is without a doubt one of my favorite figures from this entire set. It's really awesome. Unless that's not him, pretty sure it is. Regardless of who he is, he could be Steve and I think he's really cool. Like these figures have so many little nice sculpting details that they, and they look good just like this. I mean, I like the Ranger figures, but the fact that they're all one solid color makes them look a little cheaper and I think harder to paint. And with these, I feel like there's Primator and Pumpkin Wrapper, who are pretty famous monsters and also from Hyperforce. And I, these are my two of my favorites too. They look really good. But what I was trying to say is that like, if I just leave these on display like this without being painted, I feel they don't look as bad. They kind of just look like memorial statues for the monsters, like to commemorate them since they're just kind of like gray figures as opposed to one solid color. So these are really, really nice. All right, here is our second grouping. Kind of a weird grouping. The other two are kind of miscellaneous. I just felt like these guys fit together a little bit. So you have armored red ranger figure, as you can see, one solid color. You have the human version of Ranger Slayer, who is just all in pink as opposed to a regular one, which is not. Couple henchmen figures, you have the putties with these sort of blade morph attachment. Alpha 5 here, who is also smaller, similar to Finster, which is kind of explained in the cards. He's the, like a little helper character, there's like a special card for him and stuff like that. You have the mutant putty, which we've seen before. Here's a Tangle Warrior, again you get a bunch of those. I'll have the sheet probably in the, the wrap up and you'll see how many you get. But these are ones you get a ton of, I'm just using the one example. And then obviously, Green Ranger here. Alright, we got one more grouping of figures for this set. Right, here we have our last lineup. White Ranger Tommy here is our only Ranger in this lineup because they were all in a row in the set so I grouped them together. But his looks pretty good. It looks a little less weird than the super bright ones but I think it'd be easier to paint as well in terms of the smaller amount of details but it's a pretty solid looking figure. Again the villain sculpts is really where it shines. You have Lord Zed here looking really really good and then until he gets blurry on there, he's, he's embarrassed. Then you have Green Ranger Tommy, also done up in the gray style there, kind of giving you a, a look at what it would be like if the Rangers were uh, all gray figures instead of just the, the ones based on the Ranger color. You have Rita Repulsa from the GoGo -Go comics in her special outfit from that, which looks really, really cool. And then you have Scorpina here, who's obviously uh, a major MMPR villain, also a major Hyperforce villain, which is super cool. So yeah, you get a ton of figures in this All right, set. now moving on to the card section. We have our character cards. White Ranger Tommy, Green Ranger Tommy, Jason with the Dragon Shield, Ranger Slayer Kimberly, Civilian. Then you have the individual Rangers. This art looks like it was taken from the old 90s comics. Red, blue, black, pink, yellow of the classics. 
White Ranger Tommy, and I say of the classics because, wait, Green Ranger Tommy, wait for it. Then you also get Rocky, Adam, and Cat. Where's Aisha? There she is. See, I always think Rocky have an Aisha, so there we go. And then you have Zord cards, obviously, White Rangers, Green Rangers, Grave Zord, which was Ranger Slayers in the comic. And then you have the Alpha 5 card. And then this is the little card that sort of explains the rules of Alpha, where I was kind of talking about that with the figures and stuff like that, is a support, a support AI character card. Then here we got villain-based cards. There's the freshly made Finster card. So all of these have a couple duplicates. Primator cards, Electric Thunder. Electric, that's a really cool card. That's the same art from the box. I really like that a lot. More Primator cards, Pumpkin Wrapper cards some of which are based off of the show. Really, really cool art on these guys. Really like these, oh god, I, saw, I thought that said something else. So Rhino Blaster, that's a pretty easy one to remember. They probably changed it to Mantis Blaster for Beast Morphers because Rhino Beetles aren't relatable. I mean, I know it's not a beetle, but I just wanted to make that joke and I was really reaching there. Ro the Robo Goat. The, the next stack of cards is like ridiculous. It's like insane. There's Goldar, again, the Goat. Goldar, that's really cool. Really cool Goldar art. Lord Zed, that one's so like smiling. Like it's like a it's like a smile face, Goldar. Lord, this putty looks like he's whispering a secret into Zack's ear. What's the secret? Probably clay, if we're being honest. Lord Zed cards, Scorpina. It would be cool if they had one of her fighting the Hyperforce Rangers. Like they'd obviously have to make art for it. But it was the Wizard of Deception. Like I knew it was, but I just kept feeling like if I, if I committed to it, it would just turn out not to be him, just to spite me. All right, and look at this stack of cards here, just showing you how much is included with this, so how many cards you need for their attacks and whatnot. Like, damn! Look at all this. That, again, looks like... Maybe it is, and I'm just being stupid. It looks like it's taken from the 90s comic art. Like, it's this mix of art like that, art directly from the comics, art that was specifically done for this. Like, that, I believe, was the cover of issue one of the modern comics. There's Ranger Slayer... The Blade Blaster just showing up everywhere. Hunk. Oh, Chunk. I'm like, I don't know. I don't think putties are that attractive. I mean, you know, teach their own, I guess. Dragon Dagger Shield. That's a cover from Shattered Grid. I think it was like 26 or something. Again, this reminds me of the old Dragon Ball card game. Sometimes I, me and my friend used to play a game where we try to guess exactly what episode it was from. Then you have like the Henchman character card, the Tango Warriors for multiples. Z Putty Patrollers. There you go, compared to the Super Not Ultra, Eye Guy, Finster, Primator, Pumpkin Wrapper, Rhino Blaster, Robo Goat, Goldar, Lord Zed, Scorpina, Wizard of Deception. Then you have all the villain-based attack cards. Sorry if I'm going kind of fast, like there's just a ton to go over and I don't want to keep you guys here forever. Like you can always pause it, you know, you can pause it. I just paused myself. That's how powerful I am. That was, I don't know why I said that, that was weird. So Evil Green Ranger, green! That's a really weird, uh, that helmet looks really weird on that. I recognize that art too from the comic. Eye Guy cards, and then we'll check out the back here in just a second. That's pretty familiar based off of the show. And then you know on the back you have the individualized villain art for whatever card they use. Evil Green Ranger, uh, Z Putties, Tangle Warriors, the villain cards. We've seen a couple of those before. These villain lineups. You got the, the locations for this set specifically and the generic card back. Right, so here is our overview shot of the set. Obviously we don't have all the individual henchmen. Like you get at least five more of these. You have like a dozen plus of the tangas and these putties and stuff. So there's a ton more. It's just like, you know, you don't need to see all that. And it takes me upwards of two minutes to put all them in here. And then obviously you get these little physical tokens in this little baggie as well as well as your location card. I keep calling them location cards, but you know what I mean. Shopping mall, another Mind Flayer joke there, dockyard, power plant, st stone quarry, and then on the back of them is their, like, you know, different details and stuff like that. So this is all you get with that. But yeah, so overall, it's kind of weird because I mentioned Hyperforce is my personal recommendation for an expansion because of my, well, personal preferences and what I like about it. But I would definitely argue objectively this is the bigger bang for your buck. This set is really a lot. You get a lot of awesome figures, both for the game and just for how they look. Just, a, I think, a ton of content out of this. So, I mean, it's really ultimately up to you, but this set is definitely worth it. Like, I was really happy with the set. Even though the Hyperforce one I thought was a little bit more neat of a niche thing, this one's a little bit more bang for your back. Beck? 
Bang for your buck and your buck. You know how it is. All right, now let's move on to checking out the villain and foot soldier sets. Okay, so here we have our villain pack. Think of this much more like a character DLC rather than a full-on, like, story type of DLC. So we have Commander Crayfish, who I like to call the Crawdaddy Cadet. You got good old Rito Revolto. He's, like, super decked out with stuff. I remember the cannon from the show, but I don't remember the, the, almost said the shields, the shoulders doing that. You have Unicorn McUnicorn Face right here. Even though I just looked at the cards, I'm spacing his name. But you have him. For sure, you have him sitting there. And you have good old Master Vile sitting here. And just in order to save time, instead of cutting away to a different segment, these are the cards that they come with. This is all you get is just these, uh, the figures and the cards. You know, no placemats or anything like that. So like I said, think of it. But there we go. I said it the whole time. Pluticorn. That's exactly what I said. Check the receipts. No, don't check them because they're wrong. Uh, so yeah, it's much more like a character uh, DLC rather than a full-on like sort of story expansion that's a much more like expansive, well, expansion. That's a really cool piece of art. I remember that from one of the comic covers, but I love me some Thunder Megazord, so it's a really cool bit of art. And then you have the individual art on the back here of the uh, individual characters and sort of this one right here for like the, the general villain cards. Master Vile's art is cool. This is cool. Let's go back here. There we go. The Crawdaddy Cadet. There we go. All right. Now let's move on to the henchmen. Okay, this here is the Foot Soldier Pack. So you get more of these mutant putties. More of them, I'm going to call them lightsaber putties. I like to call them that. More centuries, more regular putties. I mean, the Z putties, the regular putties. So, like, they're exactly the same as the ones I've already showed off before. Basically, I'm going to be honest, unless you really think you need it, if you've already bought the villain expansion set, you do not need this. This is just literally extra cannon fodder. It's, like, overkill. I only basically have it because it included in the everything package when you backed it. But it Alright, and here we have the Deluxe Megazord and Cyclopsis figure, these large scale figures, which again, much like the villain figures, are very nicely detailed. Really great sculpt detail in here. I think people might have a lot of fun painting them. As I had mentioned in the unboxing, the sword is removable too, I guess, for some reason. Like, he just kind of looks like he's shaking his fist in anger if he doesn't have it, but, you know, that's kind of neat, I guess. And then you got Cyclopsis here, which he looks like he's doing a dance. Looks like he's about to do the floss, to be honest. But also, very nicely detailed. I, I, did I already mention, I think it'd be fun for somebody to paint these. Like, I might try it. I'm worried about ruining them. But I think with the bigger target, it makes it seem a little bit easier. But these are both really cool figures. I really dig them a lot. I love the details on them. And what I like about them, though, is if you are going to display them when you're not playing, or if you just would like them, if you're worried about painting them and don't mind this look, they kind of just look like statues. Like either they got turned into statues or, you know, they're in a, outside a museum or something. So it looks a lot more presentable like this if you're afraid of painting than just these solid colors. Cyclopsis does come with cards like usual. Megazord does not. He does not. So you get some really cool art there on that. He looks like an evil... The more I look at the art on this, like, like you look like an evil... White Blaster Beetleborg in that pick. Like, that's what he looks like. You get some, like, I like how, boom. Because these work like Exodia, so you have all the different pieces like that. So that's why you have those like that. But it makes for really funny backings of cards and stuff like that. All right, that is it for the main coverage. Now let's just go ahead and talk about the rules a little bit and a final verse. Real quick, I almost forgot to mention the most important part of the set, which is the dice, even if they won't dimension for you. But this is, I just kind of keep them in the box because I just, just got them back in there, so I didn't want to take them all out. But you can see the gist of it right here. It tells you how many you get of the different colors. But other, they're just pretty much par for the course of these type of dice you have in these RPGs. Like, there's nothing, and you get these ones extra too uh, in one of the main sets, but there's nothing really special about them that I think differentiates them. Sometimes you'll see dice like these in other RPGs where they'll kind of tailor the symbol to be more related to the property, but these are pretty par for the course. But obviously these are also included. I like the packaging. Okay, that is pretty much it for the main review of this, this whole huge space that's really hard to fit everything in. So as for the rules, as I talked about after my main uh, go over of the core game, basically you're picking a range and you're role-playing as them and you're 
you're setting up the game based on locations and fighting different villains and obviously depending on what you have whether it's this or that you'll have more possibilities of characters and villains and attacks and all that sort of stuff. I'm going to do a, a sort of more detailed or at least I plan on doing a more detailed kind of rule video. I didn't want to do it in this one because the video is longer enough already outside of this basic stuff and also because I want to get a chance to play it first so I actually learn how to better play it. I don't want to misinform you guys by getting something wrong because I'm just very sterilely reading about it once I get a chance to play it. As I mentioned, me and the RR Podcast guys are planning on doing a live stream sometime soon-ish where we play it, so I'll link to that. And then after I get a chance to play it, I'll feel confident about talking about how I how to play it more. But overall, I think this is something really, really cool. And if you're a fan of RPG games like that, I can definitely recommend giving it a look. If you're kind of like a weird hybrid like me where you're interested in it and you also want to collect the figures, I can definitely recommend like picking up this and maybe one of these sets to get the figures. But I think it's something at least worth looking into if you like the figures or you're into these type of games. I think it's a really nice quality set. But that's about it for this one, guys. Until next time, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and of course, don't forget to climb the steps and ring that bell to notifications for my videos so you can see my further coverage on this. Thanks, guys. Till next time, Dawson Ryder signing out.